weekend when you weren't answering my calls, I went to a party with Brian, and I went home with him, and I slept with him. Holy mother of Jesus! Yeah, I know what happened. What? Well, Brian bet me a 50 bucks and a pack of cigarettes. What? Holy mother of Jesus! That he could sleep with you. So now I'm down 50 bucks and a pack of cigarettes. Holy mother of Jesus! Why would you do that to me? What can I say? We pimped them hoes. I don't know what you heard about me. Put up this thing, get a dollar out of me. This is a certified hood classic. We are about to mark, mark to this day. To this day. What's the difference between simping and pimping? <laughs> That's funny. Um, well, I don't. Mm, it's kind of the same thing, to be honest. Why life? Uh... Um, those are literally two opposite things. Simping is uh, when you are the, basically the customer. Pimping is when you're the supplier. Have you guys ever wondered how women control and manipulate 90% of men and simps? I want you guys to look at the thing between her legs. Can you define seduction? Yes, me. Three month. Well, when I was young, I came up with the three month. I think now that we older, what, it's what? more. If more, it's I want to talk about rush. that, right? I want to talk about young Jasmine developing his mindset, right? Uh -huh. Like, what made you say three months? Like, what? Were... I, I noticed that after two, three months, I could only fake, like you know, uh, I'm celibate. I, you know, I'm a virgin. I could only fake, like you know. Uh, Celebrate, I, you know, I'm a virgin. Um, even though I had a boyfriend or whatever, I like 15 or whatever the mm -hmm. case was that I was doing, these people I was able to still play that month up to like two, three months and emotional damage. And they got to like, but I really like you. And just because these girls have a fish hole, they thought I could be manipulated. I believe stuff too, but under because I'm going to get something out of it, you know? Either I'm going to believe this lie, I'm going to get some good I'm going to play dumb, get a shopping spree when I wake up. Like, life is going to go good for me after you tell this dumbass lie. You know, I'm about to do you in right after this, you know? Stop it. I came across this girl's dating profile. She says, we'll get along if you like to travel. At first, I didn't pay any attention to that. Then she tries to set me up. Read this, blah, blah, blah. Except when I'm traveling on vacation, that's the only exception. Any travel plans coming up? Red flags. She's looking for a rich man to supply her lifestyle. So, I had to use my Asian power, my Asian genius, to come up with some zingers to deflect it. And I said to her, sweetheart, here's a Wilson basketball. Now take three steps. <laughs> And a travel call on Russell Westbrook. You just traveled. Now fuck off. Fuck off, will you please, yeah? And I never want to see and speak to your kind again. Remember, gentlemen, no simping, only pimping. Here you go. Changes inside. Thank you. Yep. Well, thanks for taking me out. It's been, it's been nice to get to know you. Yeah, you too. But just after he pays. Hey, we should do this again sometime. How about next Thursday? I know this great Italian restaurant. Look, I think you're great. I just, I don't think this is gonna be a match. What? But you can't do this to me. You know how much I sacrificed? He gets shut down. But what about that check? Check. Now, according to the book of the cheek slaying Herculean, it states, if a girl tries to friend zone you on a date and she's not trying to shake the sheets and fornicate tell that cream sucker to pay for her own plate and my kings you send her back to the highway interstate thought be gone how will customers react when james asks sarah to pay up okay well in that case you owe me 40 bucks i'm sorry you're asking me to split the check mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My nigga. My nigga, my nigga. My nigga. Now, one plus one is not potatoes. If a woman has the right to
to abort a man anytime she wants. Doesn't that mean a man has the right to financially abort a woman anytime he wants? In 80 to 90% of the relationships, black women are leaving. You're home wrecking, you're breaking up the relationships. Men stay. Why do you think women are leaving? Because you've been sold a Disney fantasy that you should be happy. Instead of understanding that you have duty, honor, respect, and you, got, and you chose to be in a relationship, especially when you decided to make a baby with somebody, you need to stay for more than just yourself. French toast your happiness. So I should settle? No, you should. Are you a Christian? I'm not. Well, did you have you been married? No, I haven't. You plan on getting married? I would like to. What vows do you plan on taking? I don't want to settle for nothing less. What vows do you plan on taking? I plan on... For better, for worse, sickness and health, the rich of war, the death do its part. That he says shit about happiness. So I'm supposed to be miserable? No, you're supposed to be an adult. That's why he's the GOAT! The GOAT! This woman looks more confused than a damn giraffe in a lettuce field. Sweetheart, trying to find a good man at the age of 40. You probably have a better chance reincarnating and restarting life over again. As, as a matter of fact, it is getting so bad that I had to drag a female therapist to talk to you guys today. Now, Lori, may you come preach to the gospel. Help us here. Lori is here. She is the author of Marry Him, making the case for settling for Mr. Good Enough. Lori, look, feel my pain for a second. There are a lot of lonely men out here who are good guys. But but women and this list, it's it's maddening. Make the argument at the center of your book, please. Okay, you know, the, what, I'm not telling anybody to settle for somebody that they're not totally in love with or physically attracted to or anything like that. The book is based on a survey where men and women were asked if they got 80% of everything they want in their ideal mate, would they be happy with that? And women said, no, that's settling. And men said, 80%, I'd be thrilled, that's a catch. And so, 80% you know, to the women you surveyed is settling? The biggest problem today is that women want a grocery list of items of what they want in a man, but offer nothing to a man's life except a smelly fish hole. Report shows that by 2030, 45% of working women ages 25 to 45, by 2030 will be non-married, no kids, single. And gentlemen, mark this date. If you guys want to become rich, start investing in cat food. Because a few years down the line, there's going to be a lot of single women alone with their cats, like this woman right here. Well, I could be cooperative submissive without being yes, so no, no, sir. Ah, uh, see, be. there's that. Uh, see, there, see. But there I'm not go. going for somebody who's so much. Like, no, okay, like, you, you don't know what to talk me. Sorry, you're already sorry. showing. You're already showing problems right now. Right now, you're already showing them. Okay. Glad you got a cat. You may want to hold that motherfucker for a long time. <laughs> I'm currently in a <laughs> You currently what? I'm not single. I'm not single. You're not married. Gotcha, bitch. That's settling because, you know, the question is, what actually makes us happy in long-term romantic love? And, you know, that's the question that I explore in the book. And I'm a journalist, so I went out and I asked neurobiologists about chemistry, and I asked behavioral economists about demographics, and I asked marital researchers and divorce What do they say? Lawyers. What do they say? What do they say? And, you know, the thing is, we're too picky about the things that don't matter at all for long-term romantic happiness, but we're not picky enough about the things that actually do matter. Okay, so break that out for me. What are we too... What are women... You know, it's pretty simple. What are, it's pretty simple with men. A woman's favorite love story. She's out here trying to find her Superman, but constantly walks past Clark Kent all day long. Now, this video was made 11 years ago, and if Lori said this today, she will get executed and fired on the spot because we now live in an era. My Asian brother. Please explain. Kids born in the 80s. Kids born in the 90s. Ow, fuck. Kids born in the 2000s. Ow, daddy, my pussy hurts. Like I always said before, if you want to piss a woman off, 
tell her the truth. Because uplifting women nowadays only means lying to them. <laughs> Derek Jackson. But a woman asked me, is there anything those of us who are 40 and 50 and up need to do differently on the dating scene? Like, or is there anything different about dating us at all? And the answer is yes and yes. There are some things you need to do differently. And I believe there's something different about dating one of y'all. I'll get into that in just a minute because I think y'all are actually the most lit group on the dating scene. Bullshit. Bullshit. They're actually the most lit group on the dating scene. Derek Jackson. It's the final boss you have to face after you get done slaying all the simps in your path. Uh, but first, let's talk about how to protect yourself because there are guys who will say something like that when really they're vultures, they're, they're predators, they're looking to prey on you, some kind of vulnerability or what have you. So first thing you got to understand, you know, for those of y'all who like to date a little bit younger guys, I'm all for the cougar movement. But you want to make sure you're not a fetish. If you know, if you're looking for something serious, you're looking for more than just fun. You want to make sure you're not coming across a guy who's going to just have fun with you and then use a the number one cop out. Derek Jackson is the type of guy that will tell a woman if a man does not buy you a house, if a man does not get you a Tesla on the second date, is he really serious about you, sis? You deserve better. And saying. 40 year old women are lit. Y'all are actually the most lit group on the dating scene. What the flying chode? At that age, most of them look like a bag of raisins. And that bag of raisins comes with unsolved trauma and multiple kids from different men. I would rather get folded by an air mattress than date a 40 year old woman. I adjusted a little. What? <laughs> Oh my god, what are you trying to do to me? You cannot make this shit up. This is living proof that you can be tall, muscular and buff, and be an absolute fucking beta male. And gentlemen, no matter how many times Derek Jackson gets exposed about his lies, women still believe him. You know why? Because it makes him feel good. You know, that's what trips me out. It's like, we say women got the unrealistic expectations, and some of them do, but ain't nobody got more unicorn, fairy tale, door to explore expectations of the opposite sex than us men. Again, some women do expect a man to be six feet tall and make six figures and have a six pack abs, and that's unrealistic for most men. But I know like 10 dudes already that fit into that category. All you gotta do is have a good job and some good genetics and you're straight. But look at us, like how, how, what do we expect of a woman? She gotta be a virgin, but she gotta be a freak. She gotta pay half the bills, but she gotta do 100% of the cleaning, the cooking, the child raising. She gotta be exhausted from all of that. You know, all the cooking and washing and cleaning and all that good stuff and still be horny enough to meet our sexual needs and get a good night's rest, but also wake up in the middle of the night in case we want some head and a turkey sandwich. Whenever you guys see a man throw another man under the bus for a woman. You can never trust those fuckers because everything Derek Jackson just spilled, it's a whole bunch of giraffe shit. Because when a woman comes to the dating market, she's like, a man's gotta make six figures. Is there a number that stands out to you as like a decent salary? Like something that you would be like, okay, he needs to make this much money. If he's not ever making more than, let's say $100,000, then I would be a little bit worried about our future. I would say somewhere between uh, 400K to wherever, like there's no bar. Yeah, somewhere around 80 to 100K in your mid 20s. You are so okay. in denial, okay. you need therapy. He's gotta be 6'2", more like these girls make me sick to my stomach. Hey, you funny and all, but like you a midget, I can't do it. <laughs> I'm sorry, baby. It's the height, but we could be friends. We could, you know, we could kick it, you know. You already know what I'm to say. You know, y'all have to pass. I'm sorry, but you know, you know, <laughs> pass. I almost feel bad. I'm past. <laughs> I ain't even get on your toes. I'm just passing. I know I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm a pass because I'm kind of tall. I'm a pass because you're my homie. I, I can see over you. 
let me tell you guys what I observed from the dating market. Girls having tall boyfriend nowadays is the exact same thing as them walking around with a Gucci bag. Because these girls have turned a man's height into a status symbol. Because these girls be like, he's got to make six figures. He's got to have ripped six pack abs. He's got to be six feet. And he's got to have a six feet long flesh rocket. These girls just want to be dating the devil. Just six, six, six everything this motherfucker don't miss no he's fucking good that motherfucker don't miss man he's i honestly do not know what's worse being rejected for my height or being accepted for my money and here's the thing when a man comes to the dating market he looks at a woman and he asks himself all she needs to be is to not be fat I'm going to take my horse to the water. Now, Lori, may you come preach to the gospel for us? Come on. What are women too picky about here? Well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Men and women were asked what would be a deal breaker for going on a second date. And men named three things. They said she has to be cute enough. She doesn't have to look like Angelina Jolie. She just has to be cute enough. She has to be warm and kind. And she has to be interesting to talk to. Those seem like really valid criteria. Ding, 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 ding. Pretty simple. Right. Uh Okay, reasonable, right? The women came back with 300 things that would rule out a guy for a second date. And we're talking about like another two hours and maybe a free dinner. And they wouldn't do it. And there were things like he wore a brown belt with black shoes. Or we were having a really good time and I thought he was cute and he was interesting. But then he went, he did this Austin Powers impression. And I just can't get that out of my mind and I can't go out with him again. Okay, here you go. And so you know, can I yeah. no, no, make your other point, and then I got another quick one for you before I, I lose was just time. Say, Austin Powers guy could be the love of her life. If he does these impressions on the second date, okay, don't go on a third. But maybe he was just nervous. The guys who are bad first daters might be great life partners. You don't know. Now, when a woman comes to the dating market, and remember, dating for women is like shopping. When a woman comes to the dating market, she looks at a man. And she asks herself, does this man meet my maximum requirements? That way, standards of men. Um, I guess we could start with how much they have to earn and how tall. <laughs> um, I would say like five, seven. Like, I okay. would want you to be minimum. Um, All right. Just because like I like looking up at you. I don't know. I how tall are you? Better. I'm five, two and a half. Okay. Okay. Five, two. What? Yeah. Oh my God, it's so cute. Sure. Sure. You're basically <laughs> standing right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. so, uh, and how much do they have to earn for you? Um, I wouldn't even say, like, I mean, I would prefer someone who doesn't work a nine to five. That's how I feel about the topic. Like, okay. if that makes sense, like, I'd rather you work for me. I just wouldn't want to, my dad worked bell to bell every single day, like, six, six or five days a week, and I just didn't like that. Mm -hmm. I would want someone, like, I could actually spend time with isn't, like, nine to five, nine to six. Like, I don't know. So, uh, 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 entrepreneur? Would, yeah. The problem is, though, they work extra yeah. hard, mm -hmm. so they work 80 hours. But for less time, though, than the 9 to 5. Like, for less amount of time. <laughs> I don't know what businesses you guys are running. Well, hold on, hold on. I don't the, know. the average entrepreneur works double what they work at a job. But they may not work 9 to 5, they may work yeah. but like, 7 to like 7. But, like, you'd work, like, at home, or, like, you could work okay. when you're on vacation. Like, you it's could work wherever free. you are. Okay. Yeah, I like the freedom the freedom. Yeah. Okay. For sure. Freedom. Okay, but um, you're, you're avoiding the most important question. Uh, how much do they have to earn? How much? Um, yeah. I would say, I mean, like a hundred thousand. If you make that a year, like that's okay. very that's six like figures. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank I'm, you for telling us the truth. I cannot believe that these girls are saying these things with a straight face. These girls are throwing around numbers like six figures, one hundred k, as if they are talking about the Wendy's four for four dollars. These girls talk about money as if money shot out of ass cheeks. And gentlemen, remember this. Women do not marry the man for love. She marries the man for the lifestyle that he provides. <laughs> Here you go. How tall, how much money do they have to earn, and what other standards do you have? Mm, I would prefer six feet. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. Just because I'm super short. <laughs> Wait, how tall are you? Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, because I think you're short of her, right? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yo, 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 six feet. I lie. I lie. God damn. I, I, five, four. I think I even lied on my driver's license. I did. Miss Mayo. Okay. So uh, continuing much? on, we gotta stay focused here. All right. So uh, uh, six feet tall. How much do they have to earn for you? Mm, like eight figures or more. Eight. Eight so, figure nigga. So, so wait, wait, wait. He's oh. gotta make. So you're telling me he's gotta make seven figures is a millionaire. So you're saying he's gotta make at least ten million for you? Yeah, I want a billionaire. <laughs> okay. if, if I can bring money I'm home, you gotta talk I'm to Mike though. If I can bring money home, he has to bring money home. Are you a millionaire yourself? No, but my nigga should be. Okay. If I do, if I'm doing everything else, then I'm pretty sure that a figure nigga. <laughs> okay, a figure. So they gotta make ten million at least. Okay, okay, fair enough. She just said, "I want to date a man who's six feet because I'm super short." My brain just literally blew out a fuse and lost brain cells. <sighs> That's a woman's logic to you. One plus one to her is potatoes. It does not make any sense. That's why I never trust anything that bleeds five days straight and cannot die. And not only that, she follows it up with, I want to date a man who makes six figures. And on top of that, he has to be a billionaire. That is the top 0.1%, sweetheart. Did you not look in the mirror this morning? Because she looks like a handsome Squidward. Jesus Christ. And gentlemen, that's it for today's video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And if you enjoy the content, don't forget to hit the thank you button. And if you want to buy your very own Cheek Slaying Gospels, click here. Now, before I end this video, may I preach this verse to you guys. Gentlemen, never forget that there is no woman out there more beautiful than your freedom. Daddy, chill. What the hell is even that?